Hey so guys, welcome back to another monster video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing an analysis on this upcoming mythic monster called Clogor. It's going to be a part of the Legends Pass for the next season. So we're going to see whether this monster is actually worth investing or not. So hope you guys are excited. If you are, make sure to drop a like, subscribe. Anyways, it's going to get started. Now on their Twitter, Monster just went ahead and tweeted that this will be the next Legends Pass monster. But the thing is, we don't know whether it's the free one or if it's the paid version where you have to pay like 20 bucks to get it. Now. It's definitely not the $50 monster, that's for sure. So it's one of the two. If you guys, any of you know, let me know in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and check this mythic out. If you want to go ahead and read this, pause it, read it. I personally just skip these and try to get to the analysis straight away because that's what many of you guys are here for. So let's see, Clogor, interesting name. Poke Punch, deals modded, dark damage to one enemy, applies vulnerable to one enemy. Vulnerability, okay. What else we got? This bite skill, it's a moderate special damage to one enemy, steals life from the target, and applies bleeding. So it comes with one torture, steals life, and deals moderate special damage. We also have scraping claws, moderate dark damage to all enemies, applies bleeding to all enemies, so an AoE bleed. That's probably gonna be a heavy hitting AoE skill for sure. Probably like at least 35 or maybe 40 or 45. Alright, double bite. Deals very heavy special damage to an enemy, steals life from target, applies bleeding to an enemy. So basically it's one of these other skills right here. It's just that this one is a very heavy compared to moderate, but basically the same thing. Alright, so they're technically the same thing. Um, this monster does have an AoE skill I see here. So it's going to be a dark attacker it seems like, and dark attacker only. No other elemental skills besides special, of course. Let's take a look at the traits. Abomination, not so good. Starting off with the Abomination, that's that's gonna suck. The reason for that is because you guys know, Serpentix, Serpentix, Abomination Hater, this monster's gonna die. Now let's take a look at the relics actually. Trap Mask, yeah, so once it dies, it can't come back unless you have a Resurrector. So if, if you go up against Serpentix, good luck, good luck, alright? And it's a Dark Element monster, so Serpentix has access to light skills. Now it is in these books right here. Uh, it has a self-stun immunity, I believe, right? Yeah, and we also have a precision only to itself. So it's a status caster and it's a self-precision. Interesting. So trait-wise, not the best. I'm not really a huge fan of, but it is what it is. We're going to take a look at the stats here. So shall we take a look at the level 100 or 150? I think 150 is better to look at. 14,144 speed. Not starting good with the speed. Speed is actually pretty bad. Take a look at the power. This is really important. 26,128. That's pretty good. So I like the power. That's what matters the most, right? Because monster is an attacker. Speed, on the other hand, come on. So what I would recommend would be two speed runes with one strength. And obviously, mutated life would help. All right. Now, let's see what else we got. Because there's more skills right here, right? Oh, they didn't capitalize uh, abominations. It doesn't matter. And they just capitalize the whole evil word all right all right whatever i don't care <laughs> let's just uh let's go ahead and take a look at these um tier one skills and everything else so should we do basic attacks sure low earth damage to all enemies low dark damage to all enemies still life from target so it does have a one or zero turn cooldown right there's one zero turn cooldown right here we also have this low special damage to all enemies applies life regen so i don't think anybody's really gonna run the special damage aoe skill here same with the earth Oh, it has access to Earth. Wow. Oh, I didn't even notice that. So it does have access to Earth. Okay. Now we also have a moderate dark damage to one enemy applies vulnerability, which we saw up top. It's a one turn cooldown. So every other turn you can go ahead and spam that. Now the Syria Goblin is actually a zero cooldown, zero damage. Ah, it's just vulnerability to everybody with nightmares. I don't think anybody's really going to run that. Oh man, you've got to be kidding me. These other skills we already saw, obviously. Now, this damage right here is actually pretty good on tier 3. This is a single target double bite. I think this will be... Yeah, this is definitely his best skill. His best single target attack. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be running the Scraping Claws. It's a 30 damage, it seems like. So, 30 damage AoE. Alright, and Stamina Cost seem okay. It's not, su it's not super high, I would say. Compared to the other monsters we've seen recently, it's not that high. And cooldowns are actually okay too. I, I can see the cooldowns being fine. Let's take a look at the relics. I forgot about this. Trap and Mask. You know, I kind of wish it was Trap with SN. That would have been a lot better. You know what I mean? But it's actually Trap and Mask. But at the same time, that's actually not that bad. I like this. It's just that I would prefer 
a SN over mask. You know what I mean? So, interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of interesting how this monster actually has access to an earthy image skill. <laughs> and that earthy image sucks. <laughs> it's literally his lowest damage output. Um, overall, damage output just sucks for this monster. Well, it doesn't suck, but it's just not the best. The only two that are okay are basically the 40 damage right here, this bite skill, and the 55, which is the scraping claws. No, 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 that's a double bite, actually, sorry. So, I'm not a really huge fan of the damage outputs, but his power set kind of makes it up for it. So I would say in my personal opinion, this monster is like mediocre um, in this current meta, but just be careful of like Serpentix and things like that, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's, it has an interesting design as well. Now you're probably wondering, again, what runes would you give this monster? Um, like I mentioned before, I personally recommend two speed and one strength since this monster is lacking on speed. But if you don't want to do that, you can do two strength and one speed. All right. But again, two speed and one strength will probably work best. Just make sure to pair it up with like maybe a damage booster. There is uh, Mother Talica or Algata. Those monsters could literally make it up for that one strength rune that you're not equipped on, on this monster basically. But yeah, that status caster runs out. So technically you only have these two to work with. And the Abomination, that's kind of like a win and loss at the same time if you think about it. Just be careful of Serpentix like I mentioned. But um, again, mediocre attacker, uh, nothing too special. Would you invest, what I'd recommend investing in this monster, just take it to the Ring of Survival Legend. I wouldn't really recommend um, spending or investing Astronites on it. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.